Hello everybody, welcome back to Capital City Beads. My name is Christina and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a wire wrapped tree. We're going to be using some craft wire and some gemstone chips to give it some nice texture that really look like leaves. We need a few tools. We need some wire. I'm using a 26 gauge vintage bronze wire, a large circular metal frame, some gemstone chips, these are peridot, and a little jump ring to attach it to your necklace chain or whatever you're going to be attaching it to. You're going to need a chain nose plier, something pointy with a very smooth inside. You don't want anything with teeth. You'll also need a wire cutter. These are kind of junky, but it doesn't matter. They still cut nice and close. I have 20 pieces of my 26 gauge wire. I have pre-cut them because it kind of takes a minute. They are eight inches long. So you're gonna cut your wire at eight inches. I cut my first piece and then I just use that piece to help me measure out the rest of the pieces. I found that it goes a little faster. So once you've got your first piece, you can just line your wire up um, and snip it. And I, I think it goes a little quicker. You're gonna do that 20 times and create a little pile. They don't have to be perfect. Uh, they have to be eight inches. Um, and then we're gonna bundle them all up, gather them and line them up so that there aren't any weird ones that are sticking out too far. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we just want them in a nice little bundle. We're gonna pinch about two inches from the bottom of our bundle and we're gonna twist them together to create our trunk. So we're gonna pinch with both hands and we're gonna twist, twist, twist until we've created about an inch worth of trunk. We don't want it to be too long because it does have to fit within that circular wire frame while also leaving enough room for the roots and the tree leaves. So twist it, make sure no wires are falling out and you can see this is gonna lay on top and the roots will be down here at the bottom. And then we're gonna use that wire at the top to wire in our uh, leaves. So our next step is to spread out those roots. We're gonna fan them out. Uh, it's okay if the wires cross a little, but you do wanna make sure that um, they don't look super twisted or weird down there at the bottom. But spread them out into a nice little fan. Once you've got those all fanned out and separated nicely, we're gonna find the middle wire and uh, spread the other wires out. To secure our roots, we have to start from the middle and go out one direction and then come back to the middle and go the other direction. You're gonna start by laying your trunk on top of the wire frame. You don't wanna go up too high or you're gonna have way too many roots. So that bottom, I would say like quarter inch of the frame, you're gonna lay it on top. I'm gonna to start by wrapping the center wire around the circle frame. So you're gonna wrap it around and in, around and in. We're gonna do this three times. And this wire is just going around just the metal frame. You can use your nails to pinch the wire closer together. You want those wraps nice and tight and close together so that it has a nice clean look. You don't want them overlapping because it can get kind of chunky down there. We can leave the excess. We're gonna trim that all at the end and we're gonna be moving from the center up to the right. So we're gonna secure all those right side roots first. So taking the next wire and wrapping that one around three times. And it's important that you do one wire at a time and do them in order from center moving up to the right. So you move to the next wire and that one's gonna go around three times. One, two, three. Again, don't worry about the excess and don't be afraid to push those wires you're not working on out of your way so you have plenty of room to tightly wrap these wires around that frame. 
The reason we work from the center out to the right is if I were to secure this one right here on the outside, I would have no room to wrap those wires around the circle frame as I'm moving up. So we've got to work one at a time so that there's plenty of room to use your fingers and move that wire in and out without any hassle. Continue wrapping each wire one at a time until you have secured all of your roots on the right side. Once you get that last wire secured, you can move on to the left side of the roots. Starting with the center wire, we're going to do the same exact thing, moving from the center up to the left, securing each wire, wrapping it around three times. Our roots are now secure. We can go ahead and trim off all these little uh, end bits we're going to give it a little haircut. You use your wire cutter and just cut as close as possible to each one of those wires and snip all of them off. No matter how amazing your pliers are or how close you cut it, you will feel little spikes or little burrs where those wires have been snipped. So we're going to use our chain nose plier to smooth those out. You're kind of doing this in a rolling kind of a motion because we're, we're getting that wire to roll and complete over that wire frame. Um, you can keep testing it as you go. Just make sure you're pinching all those little burrs in so that when you do wear this, it doesn't scratch your skin or pull on your clothes. You want to just make sure that each wire is nice and smooth and secure on that frame. Okay, now that all my little burrs are secure, I'm gonna make these roots look a little bit more like roots. So we're gonna grab two or three wires at a time and just give your wrist a little bit of a kink. Um, roots aren't meant to be straight or perfect in any sort of way, so I don't have any specific instruction as to what you should do. Just grab some of those wires and kink them. Grab some more and kink them in another direction. You wanna make your roots as interesting and unique as possible. Now we're going to move on to the top part of our tree. We're going to separate all of these longer wires into a few different bundles. Um, we're going to bundle up, you know, three or four wires here, four or five wires there. I'm not going to give you specifics because this is the kind of stuff that makes your tree super unique and one of a kind. I've actually tried making my trees look exactly the same um, 
from one project to the next and I, I cannot do it. They're impossible to make look exactly the same. So separate them into five different bundles. These are gonna become our branches. This will also evolve as you go. Some of these might have to move, some of these might have to separate. So just be open um, to this changing as you go to um, kind of morph into your tree. This is the top of my trunk and you can see right now if I were to put uh, beads on those wires right now it would fill in that whole entire thing. The beads would slide all the way down to that trunk and it would look like a bush. So we're gonna take that first bundle and we're gonna twist it a couple times into a branch. Each one of your bundles you're gonna twist a few times. Um, you'll probably have to untwist them and we're gonna make more branches. Um, this is really like a sculptural art piece that kind of evolves as you go. I've got my main branches all twisted up. I'm gonna give some of them some kinks, give them a little bit more interest so that my tree looks more natural. I'm gonna start with the first bundle on the right and we're gonna work right to left with our beads. I'm gonna separate that bundle and I'm gonna twist those two separate ones to make even more branches, like smaller branches that are gonna be branching out towards the outside of that frame. Give those some kinks. Open those ones up and twist them up. We ultimately want all of our wires to be fanned out and kind of evenly separated along the top of that um, frame. You know, that way we don't have, you know, too many beads on one side or way too many wires on the other side. Um, you can also kink your trunk. I turned my trunk a little so that my trunk had a little bit more interest. I've also seen, um, I had a student in a class once that kinked it way to the side and then pushed all the beads to the right and it looked like their tree was blowing in the wind. It was so cool. Um, so we're gonna start adding those beads. I'm starting right to left. So I've got my first bundle and I moved all my other branches out of the way so I have plenty of room to work. Separate those first few wires and you see all that empty space, that's where your beads are gonna go. So if your empty space is going way too far in, then you're gonna have a bush. You only want enough to put two, three beads. So we're gonna do our very first wire and we're gonna string on some beads. You gotta be patient with those chips. It's kinda hard to find the hole, but it's there, I promise. So slide on two beads, three beads, enough to where the beads stop at the wire frame. Since chips are of varying sizes, the amount of beads you need will change. So I got three beads on there and my beads are stopping at the frame. If your beads are going outside the frame, take one off. You want them to stay inside the frame. So this first wire, we're gonna wrap around three times, same as we did with the roots, and it's gonna go down. So I'm wrapping it down towards the roots three, four times. I'm gonna snip this excess off. You can snip it as you go or you can leave them all and snip them at the end, same as we did with the roots. I'm gonna move on to my next uh, wire, add a couple beads. Again, I'm not exactly sure how many I need because chips are funky sizes. We just want to make sure that our leaves stay within the frame. If it does go over a little, you can like bend the wire up a little to make those beads fit within the frame and it does give you some nice texture um, and makes your tree less flat. It does make it a little fuller if you bend that wire. I actually ended up needing another one because I did that, so I've got that on. They're still within the frame, and I'm gonna wrap my wire around three times. This time, I'm gonna be going 
away from the roots, so over to the left. I'm wrapping three times to secure that wire. I'm pinching it in with my fingernails. You can also use the side of your plier to pinch them in and trimming my excess. Moving on to the next wire, we're gonna add some beads. Doing the same thing, making sure we have enough beads to get that to the end and not too many where it goes over the circle. And we're gonna wrap our wire around three times from right to left. Needed one more to fill in. I don't want any wiry gaps. I got, got them nice and tight. I'm gonna tightly wrap that wire around the metal frame three times. Snip off that excess wire if you want. And now we're gonna move on to our next tree branch. I'm doing some branch decorating, kinking, bending. This next bundle needs to be um, lined up with our first little bundle of trees. So I'm actually gonna do a little bit more twisting. That branch needs to get a little bit longer and grow a little more before I can add those beads. I've twisted it up. I can give it a little kink to make it more interesting. And then I'm gonna do the same exact technique to add those beads. Spread the wires out, add beads, and wrap each wire. You do one wire at a time and make sure you're moving um, right to left. You don't want to do that far left wire first or you're not going to have any room to wrap the middle or the first wire. So you want to make sure you start with the one that's furthest to the right and move right to left as you continue growing your tree. Continue the same process from right to left until you have completed every wire one at a time. Uh, don't be afraid to move your branches, to twist your branches, kink your branches, make more branches. Feel free to move this and sculpt it however you need to.
I have made my way all the way around the tree to my very last wire. There's not a whole lot of room left, but I'm gonna put some beads on there. Uh, we're gonna put a few beads on and we're gonna wrap it on there four times like we did in the beginning. We are almost finished with our tree. Just a few more things to tidy this up. You wanna go through and make sure you smooth out any burrs from snipping off those wires on the top. The same thing we did with our roots. You wanna make sure all those little rough edges of the wire have been smoothed out so this doesn't catch on your skin or your clothes. Use your plier and gently um, kind of roll them, smush them. If any of your wires look kind of funky, you can use the side of your plier and squish them together so that you have a really clean looking wraps. Double check with your fingers so that you don't feel any burrs and make sure that the back of this tree is nice and smooth. The last thing we need to do is to hook on our jump ring. I'm using a eight millimeter jump ring. You can find the center of your tree. We're gonna spread some of the wires out. You just need a big enough space for that um, jump ring to slip in. Use two pliers, twist that jump ring open, and find that space to hook it onto the metal frame and then twist that jump ring close. You can hook this onto any chain of your choice. You can make it a keychain. You can hang it on the wall. You can put it on a cord, whatever you want to do. Um, enjoy your beautiful tree. All of the materials and tools I use in this video can be found on my website, capitalcitybeads.com. If you make one, I would love to see and hear your opinions. Please tag us on Instagram at capitalcitybeads.